Hey guys, what's up? Tevin here from KVTV. We are at Sarima at uh, the Largum Stadium for Arima Grand Prix and I'm standing next to a sexy, sexy car. Wow. <laughs> Caribbean Ultimate Fist Party! Good day, KVTV fans. We're down at Drift Motion Tree. about to go in and see what the pitch lake is all about now it's one of the largest um, pitch lakes in the world there are three known one in Los Angeles and one in Venezuela as well um... hey guys I'm Tevin from K KV TV we are at Arima Grand Prix in Arima and I'm with the Zoss man himself Narada how are you going good man good man glad to be here well, as you know, the main event got cancelled due to the uh, police permissions being revoked. Um, so this isn't really the officially the Arima Grand Prix, but this is the family day that came as a result of the Grand Prix. So we set up, they set up a racing circuit in the car park of the stadium, and we've been seeing lots of great action today. That last race with the champions was particularly exciting. You know, um, rain and challenging driving conditions, so it made for some nice action. So you can take in that later on in the show here at the Arima Grand Prix Family Day. Thanks, thanks. And he's with the Zoos magazine, the latest issue. Yeah, yeah, we have the latest Zoos here. Issue number 22. Issue number 22. Share, Interesting to watch. Yeah. $30. $30. $30 for it on sale. Interesting. Very fun to read. Yeah, and this I hope one we actually got to drive the R8 in Germany. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Spent an hour and a half with that car driving from the Audi factory straight back up to the airport from Ingolstadt to Munich. So that was about an hour and a half. Took some nice country roads and you could read about the story in this latest edition of Zoos. Hello, I am here with Trinidad famous, world famous, Mr. Frankie Boudram, seven time champion. Um, how are you doing, sir? Good, good, thank you. Hey. I know that we was all looking forward to a much bigger event today. Um, unfortunately, that hasn't been able to happen. And like I can see that there's a lot of people like they, they put a few placards up in protest about what's going on. It's a sad state of affairs that we haven't really had any motor racing this year as such. This is the first event so far. Um, what, do you, what do you think about all the external interference? It's really a sad situation. Um, I have been champion driver seven times, seven national championships here in Trinidad and all those championships have occurred at the World Circuit. Unfortunately, it's been almost seven years gone. I think it's just about seven years has passed and we have lost the wall of field circuit. Unfortunately, that has put us a great disheartening. Uh, millions and millions of dollars have been spent on real high-tech equipment, good race cars, nowhere to run. We have another situation where we have youngsters coming up, uh, young guys with the Evolutions, the Subarus. Guys out on the streets, unfortunately. We are, un we are unable to find a home for them at this point. Our Ministry of Wo uh, Ministry of Sport is really trying very hard. Um, we, have rep we have representation from the Ministry of Sport here with us. It's a real unfor unfortunate circumstance. Today we should have had a stage Grand Prix, the very first Grand Prix in Trinidad and the very first racing event actually for many years. And that has had uh, unfortunate circumstances and it had to be cancelled. Um, so we're here, here at a level of motorsport where motor racing is the most watched sport in the world, separate from a World Cup event. It's sad to see that this is where we are. We're actually in the car park. But on the other turn of the coin, at least we, you know, the ministry is trying their very best. We have representation from the Ministry of Sport here, Mr. Bob. Excellent man. He's been with us through the whole event and he's trying to put things in place. The, the Minister of Sport is definitely trying to have TITASA, which is the governing body of motor sport in Trinidad and Tobago to have some here of cry and try to assist us in whatever way they can. The situation is really sad here in Trinidad. We were the hub of motor racing. Guyanese, Jamaicans, Jamaicans would come down here. We would run the Caribbean Championship. We have nowhere to run. We have nowhere to test. We have nowhere to practice. It's really how, how far do you see us from being at a stage where we have our own facility, our own motoring facility? Difficult to say. I mean, based on the history of the situation, 
that we faced for the past seven years difficult to say, but um, I'm not privy to say, but what I can say is that we urgently need it. We really, really do need it. It'd be nice if we can see something at least within the next five years. But um, on another note today, how's the day been going for you? Um, have you been out there on the track? Yeah, it's, it's really wet. It's really a little bit slippery. The Civic that I'm driving today, it's a, a 300 horsepower Civic, uh, ultra close gearbox and everything. So a car like that is difficult, very stiff suspension, difficult to, to maneuver in a car park, you know. This and is really designed for like stock cars, right. you know, but we'll see how it goes. And where, where on the track is the is a spots to overtake, if you can overtake on this track, it's very tight. No, yeah, it, it is, but there, there, there are two options in my opinion for passing, that will be in the chicane down the left hander and on the extreme right hander here exiting onto the straightaway. There's room. If you accelerate and you get inside early, you can you can get out in front. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Rubra. Wish you all the best. I'm with the Devinat himself. You can tell from the t-shirt. You can tell from the t-shirt. So I say, what's up? How are you going? I'm good, I'm good. I know I just um, made a call this morning to come up and photograph the event. And I was made an offer, you can come and run. Because I don't have a roll cage, but we normally race without a roll cage at the ARC car park. Seeing as this is a car park, they invited me to run and being a race peon, at least that's what they call me. I said, no problem, I'll come and run. Yeah, and that's it. All right, and for the Arima Grand Prix, is it something I was expecting, something small no, or? No, no, no. I mean, the clubs, all the clubs have the little infighting you know, or whatever, but it's always sad when racing of any kind is stopped. I mean, and that, that was disappointing to hear that Nara wasn't able to run there the Camden um, drag racing event. Yeah. And then what happened with the Arima Grand Prix? I mean, memories of 2010 with, with Auto Sports and their Arima Grand Prix, that's, that's really sad. It's really, really sad. One day, one day we'll get there. One day we'll get there. Yeah, hopefully, 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 by the government, if they were ever so kind to give us a race track, please, we beg of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I beg him too. I beg him. Okay, I am here with legendary Frankie Boudran, um, you, you saw his son Franklin uh, earlier. Um, Mr. Boudran, how are you enjoying today? Well, any, any, any pinch of motorsport excites me. Any pinch, as bad as it is, as small as it is, as large as it is, I really love it and I'll always be there and support it. You know, it's sad in the true sense to see the quality of the sport in Trinidad and Tobago. And it really hurts because I've been doing this for like 40 years. I've been racing since I am 20 years old represent this country all over the world. I've been successful in lots of places, lap records are lots of places. And it's really sad to see the, the situation of the sport in Trinidad and Tobago. I just pray and hope that the Prime Minister could look at it as a meaningful sport and as a revenue owner for the country too. Why do you think, because um, I've, I've noticed this myself, like when you're watching like news coverage, if it's to do with sports, you will see um, say a few minutes of tennis, a few minutes of cricket, a few minutes of football. But literally, if there's any motorsports coverage, and that's if yeah. there is any motorsports coverage, it tends to be seconds. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Well, it, it, as I say, it's a saddening situation because motor cars in Trinidad and Tobago and motor activities in Trinidad and Tobago is one of the biggest things. Um, revenue owner for the motor car industry. I mean, we probably have pretty, pretty close 700,000, 600,000 cars in this country. So dealers and so, people into the automotive industry makes a lot of money out of the sport. But what is happening, they're not contributing, they're not putting back and they're not giving back. You go to a sponsor for a sponsor for an event for $1,000, maybe $2,000. $5,000 for trophies or something and it's always like a pull a gun on the head you know they always try to get out it and um, on, we can't present something properly I don't think the media will get involved you know media like to look good they like to um, develop sports or things that will, will, will look good and at this point motorsports on the down so that's why you're not seeing it the question you ask is why you're not why you're not because the quality that we could present here is not really um, good enough for, for, for television. That's how I see it. Um, regarding a future facility for racing in Trinidad, where where do you think would be an ideal location? Would it be to revamp Wallerfield or to choose a new location? And if so, where? I, I think Trinidad needs a new whole investment or investors to get involved in motorsport. I race in England, USA, everywhere, and I know for a fact if there's a decent truck in Trinidad and Tobago, it won't have enough space on the air, in Piaco Airport 
for aircraft to land. They wouldn't have enough space. They wouldn't have enough hotels. They wouldn't have accommodation for the people that are going to come. So I'm hoping that the Prime Minister listen to what people have to say, listen to the voice of the people I love her. She's a great Prime Minister. But as I say, all the story about the cabal and all that, I don't know. I don't know what the situation is. I'm not into politics. But all I ask her kindly that she get out there and look at motorsport in a, a real positive way. In a positive way because it's a great revenue earner for Trinidad and Tobago. You look at motorsport in the world. You look at football or cricket, they're the two biggest sports. They are the two biggest sports in the world. And somebody can't be blind not to see that. You look at NASCAR. You look at, you look at IMSA. You look at... Um, a Formula One race, and there's millions and millions of people on every picture. There's not space to stick a pin, right? You look at football as the same thing. And how blind could we be in Trinidad and Tobago, where we have oil and gas and so much gas that we, we have supposed to have the best track in the whole Caribbean? That's so true. That is so true. Totally agree. How are you enjoying today? I always enjoy it, as I say, whether it's small or big events. Come out with my family, have a little grandson into the sport. Fantastic little racer, he racing go karts. And I hope in one day I could see him in a Formula One car to represent Trent and Tobago. And if I have to do it at, on my own, own self, if I have to do it by myself, I will try hard to get a Formula One star. You know, before I die. And I, I am teaching him, it's fantastic. You'll see him drive in a minute. Great little artist. And we can only hope for the best. You know, I'll try to do it. You know, it's difficult, it's a big sport. To say that you're gonna do it on your own, but a single person, I think, you know, as I say, goat can't make sheep. I think he has a little bit of my blood in him, and he's a great driver. How old were you when you started in motorsport? I started at 20 years old. Oh. I'm now 68. So I'm racing, you know, 48 years old, 48 years now, okay. and I'm crying for a track 48 years. You know, to see a track Frankie Boudram Raceway or, or whatever, anybody name it, it don't really matter at this point. But you know, I've represented, I've done good for my country. I've been in places when I put Trinidad flag, they don't even know where it is. I've been a big race in Sebring, they say, where are you from? I just say South America because they don't even know where Trinidad and Tobago is. Right, you know, I, what you race on, I say, my dad was a farmer, cane farmer. We race, we um, work bikes and carts. I say, well, I learned to drive on a bikes and cart. You know, I, you know, I learned to drive on a bicycle cart and the guys ask me how much horsepower because the Americans don't know what a bicycle cart is, you know. Yeah, it's a big job. Oh, my sides, my sides are heavy. Mean, that's a, wow. Um, I understand that that is your motor car as well, the cool Do You want to tell, it, tell us a little bit about um, uh, the beauty of a car like that? It looks fantastic. Yeah, well, there's, my, there's my fifth Corvette and I was lucky to get this one because they only build a hundred of these. Uh, most of the football stars in the States have them. But I was fortunate because the dealers I bought my cars from got one. And um, when he got that, he called me and said, listen, I have, I have something here for you. So I sold my car. I had one before, a Burgundy, which was a 50th anniversary. This is now 100. So I love Corvettes. They're fantastic. They're one of the best cars I've driven. I have a Lamborghini. I drove Ferraris. My son have Porsches. But at the end of the day, the, the, the Corvette is a car, good stereo, good, comfortable to work with, good air condition, lots of power good handling car. So I stuck with the Corvette for my everyday car. Mr. Boudram, thank you very much for your time. Hey guys, what's up? I'm here with Richie. Nice to meet you, sir. So, um, how oh, the Grand Prix going so far with you today? Any improvements? Satisfied? Or could you do a little more modifications to the track itself or the event itself? Well, I must say, first of all, I'm a bit disappointed because it's not exactly what we came to Trinidad to see. Um, we came for the Trinidad Grand Prix, as you would know, it was planned for today, but it's something totally different we're actually seeing now that was actually planned. So we're very disappointed in the sense that, you know, we did not get to see what we come here to see. But nevertheless, it's always good to see racing in Trinidad and we from Guyana and other parts of the Caribbean like Barbados and so on. We would like to see racing again back in Trinidad and we hope that, you know, things can be done to make sure that that happens again. All right, yeah. Well, uh, you come with a crew, your car, a car, or just come to expect it? Well, we come here as a crew, um, you know, like I have our friends from Guyana who are motor um, racing enthusiasts, and we follow motor racing around the Caribbean. I must also say that I'm also an executive member of the Guyana Motor Racing Association in Guyana. So, based on that, you know, we have a vested interest in what happens with motor racing in the Caribbean and so you know it's always good to see motor racing around the Caribbean and it grow from strength to strength and you know 
participation among CARICOM nationals and so on. So I'm here with Imitaz. Imitaz, I saw you racing out there. How was it? It was excellent. It was very, very nice. I mean, we, we, we did what we had to do on the smaller track. The track was scaled down today because of certain whatever, as it may be, right? But we had an excellent time out there. It's lovely. And we're on to racing. About the certain whatever, whatever it may be, what do you think about that whole situation? Well, I don't. I, I think it was maybe it was blown totally out of proportion because the reason cited for pulling back the promotion was that Malabar is a crime hotspot area. In my view, the whole of Trinidad is a hotspot area. The entire event was planned inside the stadium. Titasa has paid over hundred thousand dollars to have police and fire here. So to say, you know, it was a hotspot area it was totally controlled. So. I think it was totally blown out of proportion. How far away do you think we are from getting our own motorsport facility in this country? Five years, 10 years, 20 years? What's it looking like to you? Well, according to the, to the director of sport, who is here today, Mr. Bob, he has told us that it is very near. We have been hearing for the past 10 years that it's very near. So to tell you it's here in a year or two, you know, it's totally, we can't say that. We, have, we actually have to wait and see, okay. you know? Uh, but but we hope it's very soon. And according to Mr. Bob, it is very soon. And any indication of where it might be? No, actually no, because we have cited a few venues. We have um, the last time Minister Boynes was here, he gave us Waterloo. But a few a few things was made basically wrong with that venue. One is waterlogged, and two there's a crematorium right next door and a Hindu temple. And if you have racing, the, the total disturbance. We have cited two more places, but it's up right now is up in arms of where we will be getting that um, facility. And how did you do on the track today? Where did you come? What class were you in? Um, GT1. The first time the car on the track um, had some small problems with the car over steering, but uh, we're getting all that sorted out now. We just had a GT4 class and um, we had some drifting action from the drift guys. Now we're going to see some go-kart action. It's a, a well, well put together day up here at Arima Stadium. Do, do you want to pick up your sponsors? Oh yeah, so um, well, all our sponsors we like to big up uh, like Neil and Massey, um, well Shell Oils. Those are my sponsors from my car. Uh, Cipasa Joinery, um, Paint Masters. You know, okay. we like to thank up. Also thank all the sponsors who put together for this Arima Grand Prix. When when is the anticipated next one? Well, we are looking at uh, maybe the beginning of August, and hopefully everything goes right. It will be on the fourth show. Okay, I'm here with a gentleman called Randy. Um, I presume from the accent you're from the States. Um, yes, I am. And I understand Trinidad and Tobago is the 68th country that he's seen racing in. Wow, 68 countries. Uh, when did you start? I don't know. I started a long time ago, but uh, just recently in the last six or eight years or so, I've been doing a lot of the foreign country stuff. And... Uh, this is my first foreign country of 2014, but last year I went to uh, Russia, Lithuania, India, and Georgia. Uh, and now uh, Trinidad is number 68, and I've got about another five scheduled for the rest of this year. What other Caribbean countries have you been to? I've been to Jamaica, Barbados, and um, Guyana. Okay, so how does Trinidad compare to those other countries? Caribbean well, countries. I know that the racing isn't their normal racing here today because it's in a temporary place in a parking lot, uh, but racing's racing and it's all good. And what I've been impressed with in Trinidad and Tobago are how nice and friendly the people are. Everywhere we went, they want to help us and uh, answer our questions and uh, very friendly people and um, I'm happy about that. Okay. So what is the name of your hobby? It's called Track Chasing and I actually have a website. It's uh, my name, randylewis.org, and if you people have a hard time remembering that, they can just go on Google and do a, a search for the world's number one track chaser. We have rules and regulations in this hobby, and I've seen more uh, racing than anybody else by about 400 tracks right now. What, what, what's your favorite track um, in, in what country? Generally, I like uh, oval racing in the U.S. I mean, just about all racing in the U.S. is oval. On the other hand, racing outside of the U.S. is almost all on road courses. I think most people like road course racing the best. I kind of like oval racing because I can see it all. Sometimes road courses are big and you really can't see it all, all the time. 
but I'm, I learned to like them both. And uh, every track I go to is my next new favorite. So you're not going to give me one country apart from the US? Come on. Uh, I like New Zealand racing. Right. Yeah, New Zealand and Australia, they race sprint cars on oval tracks. Uh, I'm a big fan of the UK. Uh, they have a lot of good road racing. They have a lot of uh, good uh, short oval racing and they have full contact. And so they just uh, crash everybody out of the way. Whoa. We are at Arima Grand Prix at Larigum Stadiums. Right now we are with? Delisa. And Dareem. Delisa and Dareem. 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 Pleasant day, guys. So, how is um, Arima Grand Prix going so far for all yeah? it's, it's been It's been amazing. We just. We are here probably for this is my first um my first car race event so and I've not been disappointed so far other, other than for the rain you know it's it's causing quite a, um, a damp on things but as you can see it's not really that's not really a case where true fans are concerned no it's not <laughs> they are out in the rain yeah well when the when rain falling it's cooler well the only thing rain is up is cricket. The only thing rain stops is cricket, so, hey. That's true, what about you? What, about you? what are your views? I'm very excited to be here, actually, right? To see all these modified cars. Mm -hmm. It's actually exhilarating. Mm -hmm. I saw you, I saw you a, while, a while ago, you were, you were inside the Corvette. How did that feel? That is awesome. Child dream come true? You can say that. <laughs> nice, nice. Hey, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. That was wow, amazing. Hope you guys enjoyed the racing, the interviews, the short films, the videos, the people, the cars. For me, it was really nice. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is Devin here signing out. Goodbye.